What it do, bruh? Talk of the town, Nintendo, Doc Trey, still holding it down, still make the best games, and you know this, bro, it's the truth. If you don't like it, you can have that seat though. Now, as we debate back and forth on whether the Nintendo Switch 2's SoC will be manufactured on an 8 nanometer process versus a 5 nanometer process, it's worth going back and looking into Nintendo's next generation console history of their processing nodes versus their competition. If we go all the way back to the release of the Nintendo GameCube, we will see that Nintendo has always released their next gen consoles at a process node that was at least matching or smaller than their competition. The only time where there has been a time where there was a process node from the competition that was smaller than what Nintendo offered was during the GameCube era where the Xbox had a processing node that was at 150 nanometers versus the Nintendo GameCube's 180 nanometers. But then the PlayStation 2 came in at a whopping 250 nanometers. During the Xbox 360, PS3, and Wii era, all three console makers came out with chips that were manufactured under the 90 nanometer process. Both the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One use SOCs using 28 nanometers at launch, with the Switch coming afterwards using a, a 20 nanometer SOC. So, throughout history, Nintendo has always had their next generation console at a manufacturing process at or below whatever Sony was offering. And with the PlayStation 5 and Xbox series using seven nanometer SOCs at launch, and then now the newer PlayStation 5s I believe use a six nanometer chip. The likeliness of Nintendo coming out three years later using a process that's bigger than the PlayStation 5 actually isn't that likely. Now this isn't confirmation of anything. The Switch 2 SoC could very well be eight nanometers, but history tends to repeat itself.